Hey guys, this is Christian and today I'd like to show you the new product created by Ice Whale, the makers of Zima board, an extremely cool single board computer that I've already reviewed here on this channel. Now they are about to release a new exciting thing, the Zima Cube, a small form factor computer that is perfect as a NAS or media server targeted at tech enthusiasts, video creators or people who just like to build their own private storage solution. And honestly, I am more than thrilled about this because that's really a device I was waiting for. It has some great hardware in it, a nice and sleek design, low power consumption, and that is just perfect for a home lab. So let's find out what this Zima Cube here has to offer. Just a short disclaimer before we start the video. So this device was sent to me by Icewell for free to make a short review and it might not represent the final design of the product because it is still an early prototype. As from my understanding, it is very close to what we'll get somewhere next year, but just keep in mind there is still an ongoing Kickstarter campaign for this product and a small things might change along the way. By the way, if you'd like to be one of the first people to get this new product and you're interested in taking part in that Kickstarter campaign, I will leave you a link in the description down below. So this still goes just a few days, so you need to be very quick before it ends. But I wanted to spend enough time to make this a good review and explore some of the pros and cons of this device. Now, my first impression of this Zima Cube here is overall very positive. Yeah, to me, it just looks gorgeous. I like the design a lot. It's really a small and sleek computer with lots of great technology in it. Perfect for a home lab. And yeah, once I saw this, I thought this could really be the perfect device for so many people because we already had great products from Ice Whale in the past. Yeah, like the Zima board, also the Zima Blade. These are all great small form factor devices for a home lab, but they of course lack some of the professional features you might be looking for, especially uh, when it comes to storage or additional extension. Yeah, I know the Zima board had some SATA uh, ports and uh, even a PCIe slot on the side, but come on, this is not really made to be used in that way because it doesn't come with a real case where you can easily mount a PCI uh, extension card or SATA drive, something like that. And this device here, the Zima Cube, now has all of this because it has a case where you can put a lot of hard drives in it, you can even put NVMEs in it. And it also has some great professional features like PCIe extension, a lot of networking ports and so on. So I was very curious to find out whether this Zima Cube here delivers everything that we are looking for in a home lab. Yeah, we'll go into the detailed specs here in a second. I just want to say the overall impression was great, but there are a few downsides to this, yeah? And I don't know whether this might change uh, once the final product comes out, but I just need to talk about it. Ice Whale has also created a nice landing page if you want to get more information about the Zima Cube and look up some of the detailed hardware specs. I will also link you that in the description down below. So you can see we got a device that has 6 plus 1 base for hard drives with up to 164 terabyte storage capacity in total for 2.5 gigabit ethernet network ports, a 12th generation Intel i5 CPU, Thunderbolt 4, PCI Express in the generation 4 and 4 M2 SSD slots. And I think this is more than enough for the vast majority of home lab use cases. But if we scroll down, you can see that those specs only apply to the Zima Cube Pro. So there are literally two different versions of the Zima Cube around. And the regular Zima Cube comes with slightly lower specs, especially for the CPU and the memory support. As you can see, the regular Zima Cube has a 12th generation Intel CPU as well, but one from the N series, the N100, which is a 4 core, 3.4 gigahertz CPU. So this is still a fairly new chip. and. Uh, this should perform much better than any of the mini ITX uh, computers that you can find with older chipsets around. So this is still a great choice, but the Zima Cube Pro of course has much more power. This has the i5 CPU in it with 10 cores uh, up to 4.4 gigahertz. And the Zima Cube also only got uh, support up to 16 gigabyte of DDR4 memory. So my prototype came with eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory. I don't know if you can choose between them or if they always will ship you an eight gigabyte version and then you can upgrade it yourself. We will see later the next year. 
but the Zima Q Pro comes with 64 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, which is absolutely insane. So again, much more performance. But for the storage capacity, they both look actually the same. Well, I don't know if that's accurate here because my prototype came with two slots for the M2 SSDs. And I don't know if the final Zima Q will also have four slots or if that's a mistake, I don't really know. But they have the exact same amount of base for hard drive. So the storage controller and um, the hard drive base and those kind of things, they are both the same on the Zima Cube and the Zima Cube Pro. And you also got two additional M2 uh, SSD slots on board for NVMe drives, which is also great for installing additional drives for caching or fast storage pool, whatever you want to do with it. So you got plenty of upgrade options for storage in both versions. So they're they're not really different. As you can see for PCI Express, the regular Zima Cube only has one PCI Express slot in generation three with an X4 slot. So I think this is still great for adding some additional controller cards. Maybe a 10 gigabit ethernet card will also work uh, with four slots in generation three, I suppose. And you only got like two 2.5 gigabit ethernet. I, I always say only, I mean, this is still great. Yeah, this is probably much more than you have on any regular desktop motherboard. And it still gives you plenty of options to play around with the regular Zima Cube. I just say only because the Zima Cube Pro that has much more upgradability, like it has one additional X16 slot for PCI Express in the latest generation and one more X4 slot, also PCI Express generation four. So this is really great if you want to add a graphic card to this Zima Cube Pro and you also got four 2.5 gigabit ethernet uh, ports. So really, really nice. And another small difference here, the regular Zima Cube only has USB-C 3.0, which is also great. But of course, the Zima Cube Pro has two Thunderbolt 4 uh, ports. So this is great for video editing. If you plug this into your Mac and you're doing some video editing work, you definitely want to go with the Pro version for Thunderbolt 4. So this gives you higher throughput for, for accessing the files on the Zima Cube Pro. So I have to say I like both versions a lot. Yeah, I definitely would say the regular Zima Cube is a great balance of power, efficiency and price. So there are still modern components in it. There are still great components in it. And this will work great if you're looking for an equivalent to a Synology or QNAP NAS, but you want to do it yourself. Yeah, you might want to change the operating system. You want to have a real x86 architecture CPU. Then this Intel N100 is absolutely fine. This will work perfectly for any NAS solution, NAS build. But if you need a bit more power if you might just want to run a few virtual machines on it or maybe more containerized applications like Kubernetes clusters and whatnot. Or as I said, for video editors or if you want to build a media server that has uh, a powerful transcoding graphics unit in it, you probably need that X16 slot for a real graphic card. So then you probably should go with the Zima Q Pro. But I think you still got two great options and you can choose what might fit for your use case. But let's have a look inside the Zima Cube. So to open the case, you just need to remove the two screws on each side of it until you can lift the top cover. And then you got direct access to the main board and most of the other internal components. So you can see even the N100 Intel chip I got with this prototype has a CPU fan, which I'm not sure if that's always the case because the N100 is usually often used in passive cooled ITX main boards that I've seen, but I suppose they're just going to use that same design for the i5 as well. So here the fan totally makes sense. You also got one DDR4 memory slot here. As I said, my prototype version came with eight gigabytes of memory, which is, I think, totally fine for a small home lab. But as I said, you can easily upgrade it to 16 gigabytes of memory. I don't really know if this will be the same in the Pro version, so I suppose they will have a different mainboard version for the Zima Q Pro because there they should support up to 64 gigabytes of memory, as they told us in the specs. So that should definitely have more than one memory slot and we also got two additional SATA ports in here which I'm not quite sure how you would use them because 
there's no real space for additional SSDs. But hey, we've got plenty of other storage options here in the Zima Cube. We also got two slots for the NVMe drives directly on the mainboard. My prototype was shipped with one NVMe that has 256 gigabytes of uh, storage. And what I absolutely love about the Zima Cube that it has a PCI Express slot. In the Pro version, you should have one X16 slot and another X4. As I just got the smaller model, I'm not sure whether this is the final version. Yeah, because on the homepage, they said you should only have one X4 slot. But yeah, maybe because this is an early prototype and they somehow mixed up the specs here. Anyway, I just tested this with one SFP plus 10 gigabit Ethernet card, put it into the PCI Express slot, and it just works totally fine. Really Really great to upgrade the network capabilities. Now if you turn this case to the front here you get access to the hard drives and this is something I have to criticize about this case. Yeah, As you can see the cover doesn't have any pull mechanism or a way to easily grab this and you can see I needed to fiddle around with my screwdriver to open it and also this front panel it just looks very cheap. I really hate to say this because the Zima Cube did so well with the overall chassis and in the pictures and presentation this front panel looks really great. Yeah, I thought it would be of some kind of solid metal. But as you can see, this is just pure plastic and that's really not great. Yeah, one of the covers even broke once I bent it a bit too heavy. And at this price point, I have expected a bit more to be honest. But anyway, as this is a prototype, I hope they will improve this in the final product because this might be just a small issue, but it definitely hurts the overall experience of the product because the other stuff is just so great. For example, when you get access to the hard drive base, yeah, you can see this all looks very solid again. Once you pull out the last cage and remove that little screw on the side, you get access to the NVMe extension card. So here on the Zima Q prototype, I got an extension card with two slots for NVMe extension. On the Pro version, it should be four, so that is outstanding for building a really fast storage pool. I've just tested it with adding two small NVMe drives and that all just works totally fine. I also added four, four terabytes of Western digital hard drives to this and the cages for the hard drives, I have to say they also look great. They have a great quality. They even have small LEDs to indicate if the drives are working and connected. And just to show you the back as well, as you can see here, we have the two network ports you have in the regular Zima Cube, USB, HDMI and display port. And if you remove that cover underneath, you also get quick access to the fans. This is something I also don't like much because the fans are pretty loud, at least for my ears. I mean, it's nowhere near a server rack, of course, yeah, but it's definitely louder than a regular PC, maybe similar to a smaller tower server or something like that. Unfortunately, I don't have any ability to tell you exactly how loud these fans are. Also, they might, of course, change the fans in the Pro model or in the final release product. And they absolutely should, because in my opinion, when this thing is under load, it gets quite noisy. So if you just put it in a separate room, you won't hear it. But if you got that thing right next to your computer on your desk, I mean, this probably will be used by video editors who want to connect the Thunderbolt port to their Mac for video editing. And if the fans are that noisy, it, it just will get on your nerves. So I will definitely put this thing into my server room. But yeah, maybe that's just me. Maybe somebody else wouldn't have a big problem with it, or it might be just the prototype fans because they are just cheap quality and in the final product they will put better ones in it. I really don't know. Anyway, apart from these smaller issues, the overall first impression was quite good. Yeah, The important parts in this device, such as the hard drive base, um, the hard drive cages, the main board, the internal components, all of this is just great. So I just put this uh, thing aside and booted it up. And yeah, installing the operating system was also very straightforward. If you're familiar with the Zima board, this all looks very familiar to you. You got a real x86 architecture computer. You can easily go into the BIOS, um, customize any settings. And my prototype came with a pre-installed Debian Linux distribution. And it also had Casa OS already installed. And this is an area where I think this might not be fully fleshed out yet. It definitely needs more refinement. Because Icewale also said to me, this is not the final operating system 
the release product will be shipped with. They are working on their own Linux distro called ZimaOS, which is currently in open beta. And this will probably be the operating system the Zima Cube and all future Zima Bot products will be shipped with. And this of course will ensure better compatibility with their supported hardware and also offers a few more interesting features than Casa OS has today. However, I was really surprised that neither Kava OS nor the Zima OS have great options for managing storage today. And I mean, this is a device that is primarily used as a NAS solution or storage, yeah? But they still don't have any redundancy options in their storage managers like ZFS or BDRFSS. And that's really unfortunate. Icewale has already confirmed that Zima OS will support some form of redundancy storage option probably in the next year. So it's definitely a drag and in the pipeline, but I really hope they will finish it when this product gets released, because otherwise people won't bother with Zima OS, they will just remove it and install something else on the Zima Cube. And I really would love to give Zima OS and maybe Casa OS a chance against TrueNAS or Open Media Vault because it has some great features for deploying applications. Uh, you can see they have something like an app store where we can just download some Docker containers and deploy applications in a containerized environment. They also have a great and nice looking web interface where you can remotely manage the entire device. They just lack these crucial storage features. <laughs> but of course, you're not forced in any way to use this Zima Cube with a pre-installed Cas OS or Zima OS. Of course, you can just install anything on this device that you want. But I definitely see the potential of Zima OS in here because Icewale, they have some great ideas. They have great products like the Zima Board, the Zima Blade, and this Zima Cube now will enhance their lineup even more. And when you can ship this with a nice, lightweight, user-friendly operating system that has great features like Docker on board and a storage managers that support redundancy options, this thing would be a perfect combination. It will be a hard time for competitors like TrueNAS or Open Media Vault, at least in a home lab or small and medium size use case. Anyway, that's still a work in progress, so I don't want to make a final conclusion on this software because there will be a lot of changes here and we will just have to wait how it turns out somewhere next year. One last thing you might be interested in as well is of course power consumption and of course I also measured the power consumption of this Zima Cube. When it's just the Zima Cube without any hard drives, additional NVMe's or anything, it just goes down to 23 watts in idle, which is a bit more than Ice Whale said it would have. Maybe just because it's a prototype and they did further enhancements to power consumption in their final product, but that's it for me. Yeah, And with four hard drives, two NVMe's, this thing goes up to 48 watts. So sure, it can go higher when it's under load, but that was the lowest value it could get with a fully loaded device, which is quite okay. Sure, yeah, it's more than a Raspberry Pi or a Zima Blade, a Zima board. This should give you a rough estimation in which direction it goes. So this was my brief first look at this Zima Cube prototype. So now it's your turn. So what do you think about this? Please tell it to me in the comments. So as for me, I'm pretty excited and I hope to get the final product as well in the future, especially the Zima Cube Pro, because that could be a great addition to my own home lab. So I will definitely keep you updated. Maybe I'll get the Zima OS video out somewhere next year. So I need some more time testing it. And until then, you will still have some other great tutorials and reviews to watch here on my channel. So if you want to support my mission creating all these free tutorials and tech content for you, join our community on Patreon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks everybody for watching. I will catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye.